Hello, beautiful. Welcome to day three of our Mindset Realign Challenge here on Meant to Bloom Podcast. I'm your host, Brittany Clarkson. I'm so glad you're joining me. If you have not listened to days one and two, go back, start with day one, move on to day two. These are quick episodes. You can listen to them all, but yes, the episodes are quick, but the work you're doing, taking time with the journal prompts should not be too quick. You should be taking your time with this. If you need more than one day to get through it, take another day. These episodes are here. They're not going anywhere. Um, at least not anytime in the future, near future. So take your time, go through it, make, make a meaningful impact, you know? Okay. Today we are talking on deciding what's enough. <clears throat> if you feel like you are totally overwhelmed, you feel like there's too much to do and you're always doing everything for everyone and it feels like you can just never get ahead, especially when it comes to like housework. Okay. That's where I always see this come up with me. And you feel like just no matter how much energy you put in, no matter how many things you do, you're still behind. This is the remedy to that. Okay. So <clears throat> my quote here at the top today is from David Harold Fink. He says, you have to know what's important and what's unimportant to you. And I think that is so, so important, um, that to you part. Okay. Today is about prioritizing and it is about realigning your intention with what you're doing. Okay. Let's dive in to the meat of this one. Okay. In a world so focused on productivity and comparison, it can become far too easy to place our value in our accomplishments. If left unchecked, we begin to feel like we aren't enough because we haven't done enough. But have we stopped to question what enough really looks like for us? How many times have you thought to yourself, I'm not enough? If it's been even just once, that's too many times. We all do it. I know we all do. Um, but I'm willing to bet that you've had this thought almost daily. It's been a personal struggle of my own. And I know that we can overcome this because I've made huge leaps and bounds of progress in dealing with my own enoughness. Okay. This is a topic that is personal and deep to me. Um, so the thought that you are not enough is a limiting belief. My sweet friend. There is no limit to what you are capable of. You are a shining star. You are strong and empowered. You are more than enough. I also know that my telling you that you are enough, it's not enough for you to believe it. So let's work to tear down that untruth that you've been telling yourself. Okay, here we're going to get into our journal prompts. I want you to... I want you to decide what enough is for you, okay? So often we tell ourselves we're not enough, but what is enough? What is enough? And when you're deciding what's enough for you, when have you done enough? When are you enough? When you're deciding that for you, I want you to give yourself so much grace, the same grace you would give your little sister, your best friend, your neighbor, Um, your daughter. Okay. Give the same grace you're going to give to your most loved people in your life. Give that to you when you're deciding what enough is. Don't hold yourself to a higher standard. You're not better than anyone else. You're not more capable than anyone else. Okay. It is a level playing field. We are all equal in our enoughness. Our capabilities are different. Yeah. Maybe our Or, you know, the amount of time some of us have in a day is different. But what kind of grace would you give your most loved loved ones in your position? What would you expect from them and what would you allow? You're going to allow them to do a lot less than what you think you have to do. Okay? That's the kind of mindset I want you taking into this. So let's dive into our journal work for the day. Okay? So out your pen, your paper, pause if you need to, write these questions down, meditate on all of them um, after the episode's over. If you want to go get, I'll, you know, product place that in here too. If you want to go get the physical like PDF printable of this whole workbook, 
It's got everything I've read to you, plus all these questions in it. Um, you can click the link down in the description and you can go ahead and download that through ConvertKit um, if you want it, but you absolutely don't need it because I'm giving you all the information. There's nothing new, <laughs> um, but I am the type who likes to have that physical printed copy and something that you can print again and again and redo this whenever you need to, how often you need to. Um, <clears throat> anyways, number one. All right, we're getting into the work. What are the things that must be done every day? List out the bare minimum of tasks that you need to accomplish to keep your home and family in order. Three is the recommended number for this. Keep it simple. Okay, <clears throat> so one practice for getting through this question is think if you were sick with the stomach flu and you couldn't do anything, like you're only leaving the couch to go to the bathroom kind of day. If you have a support in, you know, you've got a spouse around, your mom around, a friend, a neighbor, um, or an older kid, uh, whatever. If you have someone else helping you out that day that you can't physically do anything, what are the things you're going to ask them to do? Because I know you're not going to ask, you know, I'm personally not going to ask someone who's coming in to help to do everything that I had on my to-do list for the day. I'll say, no, that can wait until I feel better. This is your bare minimum. Those few things that really need to get done or everything starts really falling behind. Okay. This could be one load of laundry, wash, dry, fold, or even just wash and dry a load of laundry. People can pick clean out of the basket. Okay. This could be unload, load the dishwasher. One, one load of dishes will get us through. Um, <clears throat> there's a, you know, there's a number of things, whatever it is for you and your family, that's going to help you flow. Maybe it's, you know, can you pack the kids lunches for school tomorrow? Whatever it is, it's going to help life be easier but keep it super simple. What are those few things that are your bare minimum? And this is something that you don't have to be locked into forever. It can change from season to season. Um, honestly, my bare minimum is to clear the kitchen island. It's not even to do a full load of dishes every day. If I just clear the kitchen island, I you know have the space that I need, right? Um, to check if kids have enough clean clothes. All right, I don't have to do laundry every single day, but I do need to check in with it and make sure that I don't have to do laundry on certain days. All right, my bare minimum has gone even more bare to where I can go days without really doing hardly anything. Okay, I'll do a quick tidy of the house, um, like a 15 minute, boys, let's get your toys back to your bedroom, kind of clean up. Like I don't even care if it goes in the right place, which my kids just have a bin in their closet, like a plastic tote for their toys. I, you know, they don't even have to be organized, whatever. Anyways, keep it simple. Choose just a couple things that are the bare minimum. Okay. <clears throat> and what I want you to do is when you do those every day, I want you to tell yourself verbally out loud, I've done enough. Everything else is extra. Okay. So number two, your clarity question here is what are the things you don't have to do every day? What can you let go? This is everything that's extra. Make a list of all those things you tend to do every day or you try to do every day or you'd like to do every day and label these as extra. This is all extra. You don't really have to do as much as you keep trying to do. And it's not a matter of just doing less. It's a matter of knowing your worth as you're going through it is not tied to how much you do because you can do so little and call it enough that there's no way your personal value and worth is tied into that because it is so simple and so easy, right? You have an innate worthiness that we don't even need to deal with when it comes to what you're doing in a day. Okay, question number three. Your worth isn't found in how much you do. So what is it found in? I, this one takes time to really journal in. Get aligned with what, what makes you enough, what makes you worthy. This might take some time. This might take some studying. This is probably sometimes not a one day kind of thing. It is a, it is a question I want you to start questioning a lot. 
because it's really easy to tell ourselves we're not worthy and we're not enough when we don't have, you know, a stick to measure it with. When you haven't decided what enough looks like and what makes you enough, it gets really easy to believe that you're not enough. Okay, so go find song lyrics, go find verses, go find quotes, go find your personal philosophy and get concrete in knowing your worthiness and your enoughness. Okay, and it's so much easier to detach your enoughness from your productivity when you have it streamlined and you know that when it comes to doing your daily tasks to keep your day running smooth, that it's so simple that even if you were going to tie your enoughness and worthiness into it, you've already done enough, right? Because you decided you only had to do two or three things a day and it really only takes you 10 to 15 minutes to do them when you focus and get those done instead of distracting yourself with a million tasks that you never even complete because you keep jumping from task to task. The danger is tying your worthiness to your productivity. We are untangling that today. You're going to decide what enough looks like, what enough means. And you're going to know in your heart and in your mind, you are enough. You are worthy just as you are. But we're going to make it a lot easier to believe it. Okay, friend, I love you so much. See you tomorrow.